Hey guys, that's Ray from Shake and Manache. Today I got a special video for you. I got you the first place North American Continental Championship deck. This is the deck that I decided to play. Yes, it's Gears. Um, I thought about bringing my Messiahs, but that I used to win with regionals, but I decided to go with Gears. I felt like I would have a better matchup. I would have a, a lot better matchups than I would with Messiahs. Um, first off, let's just go over the Chrono Jet G promo. Because I know a lot of people... Yeah, I know a lot of people want to see it, so here's the promo. It's like the hollow pattern for like the hot stamps that you would get in the trial deck. Um, I should have the trial deck opening with this video coming up at the same time. Um, uh, if you guys want to know what the promo is going to be for those who go to finals, it's going to be a Chrono Jet uh, Dragon G. So we will have the new Chrono Jet, and then use the plaque for who wins first place. All right. So let's go over the deck profile real quickly. So for my starter, I am running TikTok. Uh, in total, two TikToks in deck. Um, two is enough. I know there's people who play three. Um, I like two. It works out pretty well. If you damage check one, you need another copy of it. You can easily soul blast it, or you can easily uh, send it back to deck with Uluru, the G Guardian, and uh, with uh, Take Away Dragon. So two is enough. Very good card. And they're running four Chrono Jet Dragon G. Uh, the new Chrono Jet from the trial deck. It's the one that you mainly want to ride into. I usually find myself riding into this one. I like this one better. Um, just helps you fix your field better, lets you get your combos. Um, it's second, it's first effect, I guess I should say, not GB2, since it doesn't actually have GB2, but it does require you to have two face of units in your G zone. Um, it's a very good card, a lot more better than the regular Chrono Jet because of the fact that if you're uh, with G Guardians out now, it made the Chrono Jet, the original one, GB2 effect more easy to counter because they can just G Guard it, and this one can easily swing for big numbers later on. Usually the first round it's about 21, 21, 26, unless you didn't start into Metal Phoenix, then it'll be about. 16 by itself, but usually it's 21 to 26 for me. Um, and then when you go to Groovy, we about 36 around by itself, and that's a lot better than being 16k, which is guard restriction. Your opponent can just G guard it. While well, this would force either a more more than a G guard or force the PG, so it's pretty good. And yes, they can PG it, but with G guardians out, it just makes it a lot easier to deal with Chrono Jet. And they ran four regular Chrono Jets. Um, the times I write this is when I don't have a Chrono Jet Dread G, or if I need to remove something in the field, like I need to make sure I get rid of that unit, say a Laurel, if I don't have a, a Heal Trigger in hand to use Hetero to send back the Laurel or something. So this is very good um, for those kind of plays, but other than that, 8 Chrono Jets, you want to keep that because you do have strides that need a Chrono Jet Heart, and effects that do need a Chrono Jet Vanguard, so... Yeah, for history maker, um, one of your key pieces in the deck definitely would not take one out. Don't I know that some people like to play three, but four you hundred percent need four because it's a very big card in your combos. Uh, three upstreams, uh, pretty much shirts out to grade one. It's another card you can use for toolboxing. Uh, attacks for thirteen by itself gains four k. Very good. You can also combo it if you don't have melon. Won't get as much combos with melon, but it's still good. Two. Delayed Blaze Dragon. This is a card actually won me quite a few games. Um, very good card. Uh, since it's a relatively new card with a new uh, clan booster for Gear Chronicle, I'll go over its effect. Auto when this unit is put when a when your other unit is placed on rearguard from your deck due to time leap. If you have uh, Vanguard with Chrono Jet in its card name, this unit gets power plus two thousand to end turn. So, so if you call this, you time leap another grade two to a grade three. It gains two K, so it'll be eleven K by itself. And then its second effect is Time Leap, Generation Break 1, when this unit is placed on rearguard. If you have a Grade 4 Vanguard with Chrono Jet in its card name, choose one of your Grade 2 rearguards and you may Time Leap it. So its restrictions is you have to have a Grade 4 Chrono Jet, so that means if you're going to try and time use this guy's effect after you use Next Stage or Gear Groovy, copy Next Stage, you can't. So you have to make sure you do this before you do Next Stage. Um, works any other time as long as you have a Grade 4 Chrono Jet. Um, so that works for any, like, if you go into Metal Phoenix, because it does gain Chrono Jet name, you'll still be able to use them. 
and it has a time leap upgrade too. It does work where when, whenever it's called from anywhere, from deck, hand, bind zone, anywhere. So that's a good thing. Um, just that it has to be a grade two. You know? So you can't time leap a stand. You can't time leap a grade one. You can't time leap um, uh, grade zero. So yeah. Um, two Calbum. I used to play three. I uh, took it down to two. Um, funny thing is, uh, I played three, never drew into it. Played two, drew onto it every game, get it off perfectly. So two is good. Um, if you guys don't know what he does, is just when he's placed on regard, choose one of your opponent's uh, units and they send it to the bottom. Usually he uses to get rid of their starter or annoying units. So very good. Just watch out so in case because it's a mandatory. You have to mandatory choose one when he's called. Um, it does suck, kind of, but you just have to play around it. One GG. One's enough. So I'll to draw a card. Uh, very good for combo plays or get draw par and stuff. One Steam Maiden Mesh Kia. Um, this card I used a lot. Like, It's a very, very good card, except for that I don't like the fact that it only works when it's called from deck by Time Leap instead of when it's called from Bind Zone from Time Leap. If it did that, I would have liked it more, but it's a very good card. I used it a lot to get more combos off, to get more draw power. Um, very good. Since it's new, I'll go over it. Its effect is auto drench break one, rest this unit. When this unit is placed on rear guard, firm redect due to timely, choose, you may pay the cost. If you do, draw a card, choose one of your units, and it gets power plus 4,000 in turn. So that's pretty good. Um, next up, one takeaway dragon. Uh, I know some people play two. You don't really need to play two because you can um, search it out with uh, history, uh, not history maker, but upstream. Well, you can take like a search it out for upstream if you, with history maker if you time leap a grade zero to it. Um, you can easily time leap to it to grab a grade one. Uh, when you're searching for a time, uh, when you time leap into a grade one, so easily you can grab this upstream, set it up. So one's enough, and you got a good enough draw power to draw into it. So that's enough. Um, next up, three melums, your main star of the deck. Um, really good for this deck. Um, three is enough. I used to play four, but I need more room for running my other grade ones. So. Three is it worked out plenty enough for me. Um, or sorry, um, I know that everyone's like hates the TikTok melon combo, but that's pretty much what makes the deck very consistent. But it's just one of the plays. It's not like what really makes the deck like the only play you can, the deck can make. You can make several plays. So uh, for those who are waiting for the TikTok hit, um, it will slow the deck down by a little bit. If they just go one to the main deck and just ban TikTok and start, I'd probably change this to Chrono Jam, the regular one. And uh, if you're watching this and it turns out Chrono, uh, TikTok got hit. So I would try to change it around and then just play one. I still wouldn't bump up another card in deck. Um, very good. If you if you want to play Chrono Jam, you can use that to get you another grade 3 when you need Stride Fighter. I know some people do that, but personally, I just prefer two TikTok still. Um, but if it does get hit, it'll just slow down the deck a little bit. Well, um, it'll make the deck a little bit slower, but in the Melum TikTok combo a little bit less consistent. But most of my turn, um, most of my games and uh, Continentals, my TikTok ended up getting retired or sent back to deck mirror match. So the deck can definitely uh, work well without it. Um, three star fighters. Um, you have, you probably need three a grade threes, and you only need three star fighters because you can easily search with a stand trigger. Four PGs on flip. Um, you count bust a lot in this deck, so you really do want to unflip. Um, I know some people like to play three Arlems and then one new time leap. The new time leap is not bad, but I would honestly just stick with four Arlems. You want to get that unflipping. It does help out. Four Hard Thump Workers. Uh, very good card. Let's you draw basic. Attack with a Chrono Jet Vanguard. Put him into Saul. Draw card. Uh, two. Uh, Kona Valley Rabbits. Um, reason why I run this instead of something else is because if you're playing mirror match and they hit your, they use hit around on you and you need to and you call this. If you are on Chrono Gen G and you have and you're just next staged, this guy if say you have enough to give it 4k, it'll be 9k attacker, or enough to give it 5k, it'll be 10k attacker. So at least you can hit something if he gets called out with head around. So that works. Three stands. I know two people are like two's enough. Um, honestly. I really, really recommend at least running three. Um, three is the magic number for me. I in one of my games in Continentals, I ended up damage checking two of my stand triggers, 
and I had one in hand. So I was happy that I played three because I was able to call this timely this into Melum uh, with Chrome Jet G's effect. But honestly, three is three you want. Very key card in the deck. Your main way to draw. Three draw triggers. Uh, goes to Saul, lets you get more Saul for if you use up your Saul for or GG for Hetero Round and. Uh, Let's see, is there any other cards in Solas? I can't remember, but really good for that. It's 4 heal trigger. Again, I'm playing the hamster because of the fact that if your opponent head around you, at least you can call something and it'll get part off Chrono Jet G. So for that, so 4 heal, 3 draw, 3 stand, and 6 crit. Um, and then let's go to the G zone after. And then I'll also go over the rounds at the end of the video, so of what I played against in Continentals and uh, my opinions and my experience. Okay, so first off, one Metallica Phoenix. Um, I before the tournament I wanted to play two, but I didn't have enough room, and I decided to play one. And one was perfect. I never wanted to go into a second one when I was playing Continentals. I ended up going to one, or I would actually go into something else if I didn't have the setup for Metallica Phoenix one. Uh, Chronos Command Dragon, uh, just so you can flip it out with Metallica Phoenix and be able to go into Chronos Command Revolution, so keep two of the units. I did use this card several times in the tournament, I think about three, four times I used them in the tournament. So, definitely when I would take that guy out, very good. Um, helped a lot. Three next stages, two GR and one reprint because I'm a scrub. Um, one to flip up when you first go into next stage, and then one to flip up when you go Gear Groovy. Two Gear Groovy. Uh, since this guy's new, I'll go over his effect. Most people probably already know it, but might as well go over it. First effect is Act once per turn, damage break two. Choose a face down card named Chrono, Jet, uh, Chrono Dragon. Gear Groovy from your G Zone, turn it face up. If you have a heart card with Chrono Jet in this card name, choose an auto ability. Choose an auto ability each from two face up gear dragon in your G zone. And this unit gets all the chosen abilities until end of turn. So basically, you can choose two gear dragons. So, like, you would choose, like, say, like, he's a gear dragon with an auto ability. Uh, choose that or something else. What are the other targets that we have in the G zone, which I'll go over in a minute? Um, third effect is. Act once per turn, damage break 3, so plus 1, choose a face down card in your G zone and turn it face up. This unit gets power plus 5,000 to end of turn. So it makes himself 31 by himself. Um, and then if you didn't have another, if you didn't have like the gear dragon you wanted to copy it face up, you can use that to flip up the gear dragon that you want to target to copy. Uh, one Fate Rider, you cannot choose this because it does not have an auto ability. Um, this is an old card so I'm not going to go over it. One Pan, uh, Wong Long. Um... So this is the new trial deck, so I'll go over this one, it is Auto Vanguard, Genesis, Auto Vanguard, Camus 1, at the end of the battle of this unit, attack to Vanguard. You may pay the cost if you do choose a grade 1 or greater face-up card from your divine zone, and put it into your hand or call it to your guard. So it lets you combo more, get multiple attacks, or you just uh, give a card to your hand. Maybe you needed a time leap, a uh, perfect guard to get a history maker, or maybe you needed a time leap, um, a melon to grab a history maker, and then call that melon back when you use... At the end, bad attack with this dude, so it really helps out. Um, usually, you're going to target next stage in Huanglong. There's been a couple times that I did target Chronos Command and Gear Groovy to get it off. Um, so, yeah, mainly you're going to target Huanglong and next stage. I don't play the Ragnarok uh, build. The one with Ragnarok. Let me see if I can pull them out real quickly. I don't play with Ragnarok because of the fact that it's another Cow Blast. Uh, you are using a Cow Blast, but the thing is, I would rather get a multiple ta another attack in or another card added to my hand instead of running Ragnarok, where uh, I do have that guard restriction, but usually my opponent's just going to perfect guard it unless they're going to save the perfect guard for Chrono Jiggy. So most of the time, this didn't really help out that much, and it was another unflip that I would use my G Zone for. and be two and didn't really have enough room for it. So I don't really recommend you playing this. Um, Hong Kong next stage is usually perfect. 
Um, one series uh, did comment. I actually did go into this a few times. Did not forget to put it in my deck list this time, like I did with my size. Um, very good card. Uh, in mirror match, when your opponent plays great two stack and you have the combo, you can just go into this and combo off, and it does really well. Or just really good if your opponent is playing great stack. One Uluru G Guardian. Let's you send back stuff, 31k, um, makes it so it's a 20k guard, so it'll be 31, 11 plus 20, 31. One, two head around, very key card. <laughs> Almost all the time I G guarded, it wasn't a head around, um, except for a few times I went to a Fauna. But head around, very good. Uh, it's a new card, so I'll go over it. Uh, auto, saw last one when the student's placed in Guardian Circle. If you have a Vanguard with Corner Challenge card name, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your opponents, regards your opponent. Returns that unit to his or her deck, shuffles his or her deck, looks at the top card of his deck, and calls it the rerun. So, most of the time that I've done this, my opponents either call the trigger or call the perfect guard. Um, for mirror match, if you're using this in mirror match, you're probably going to give them something they can still combo off with most of the time because time leaping, the build, uh, the deck just has a lot of ways to recover from the to being hit around themselves. Um, really good against decks that have like a setup. Or against decks that have key units, like you hit a Laurel, or you hit something very important to them. That was a lot. And then run with Frana. Uh, or like hit his Anzaba if you plan against an Overgrappler. Um, or hit their unit they're going to use to restand. Really helps a lot. Uh, one with Frana. I used this a couple of times, very good. Uh, I had a great, I ended up having too many great threes in one of my games, and I used this to change one of my great threes so that I had placed on Regard. To turn prior to grab a stand trigger, or to, and a, and then I did it again to grab a, the next thing, uh, another game to grab a TikTok. So it just works out really well, and it's a 10k shield, so it's pretty easy. Um, let's, let's back. As for my matchups, uh, for Continentals, uh, it was best two out of three Swiss. There was five rounds before cut to top four. Uh, no top eight since um. It was uh, not very many people because, again, it's continent. It was only the people who got invites. I think it was about, uh, let's see, there was about, I think it was like 27 tables in total for the Vanguard. Somewhere around there. So about 50 to 60 people. I can't, or maybe, no. I, I, I want to say it's like about 30, between 30 and 50 people there. For the Continentals, for those top, I can't remember the exact number because I was more focused on the tournament and then pay attention to the number, but um, so I'm probably wrong about that. But other than that, um, it was Swiss, uh, best two out of three games each round. Uh, let's see, first round was against Grand Blue Night Rose. It had the Night Mist, uh, the Seven Seas Break Ride. I mean, I don't know if it's Night Mist, the name of the card, but the Seven Seas Break Ride. So I ended up 2 owing them. They did get one turn that was pretty scary, which they would break right into the Night Rose, Call Fulfilled, huge power. Got some multiple attacks, but I used Head Around to get, stop the multiple attacks before it went off. Um, so I, that was my first game. Second game was against Dimensional Police, like Kaiser. Uh, I 2 owed that one again. Um, second game, uh, I'm trying to remember how I played on the games. Um, first game, I. Pretty much had a really good advantage. Stopped his plays, kept his, got rid of his laurels. Um, set great, uh, game two, he did uh, break right and then Legion. He had double guard crush, so I had to give up pretty much my entire hand just to guard the Vanguard for a grade three and one trigger to pass or two grade threes. And then he ended up not hitting anything. He did hit uh, the grade two, the council's grade three. And then I was able to guard the rest, and then after that turn, I next staged. Um, let's see, round three. Was the one, only loss I took, which was to the person who was took second place in Kirkana Mirror Match. I went 1 2, so I won 1, lost 2. First game, he was able to get, he was able to stride first, went off. I didn't hit a trigger, so I couldn't guard the multiple attacks. Um, second game, I went off, was able to get there, was able to get the game. Grain, uh, game 3, I opened up with 1 grade 1, 4 triggers. And then I, and then I drew. To a trigger, drive checked my grade two, and I was pretty much stuck on grade two for a few turns until I finally got a grade three. But by then, I had no regards. Then he was able to go to and finish me off. So that one was just mirror match and uh, great stuck problems. 
that was my only loss. Round four was Grand Blue. I went two one there. Uh, won first game, lost second game. Again, got great stuck. Um, I think I was great stuck on grade two that time. Uh, he was able to keep pushing with his multiple attacks. Um, so by the time I got to grade three, I was at five damage, and he was at three. And he was able to uh, keep himself alive because he was drawing and getting that soul. And he was able to combo the uh, the grade three that Cowblast two to keep riding from the drop zone so he can keep calling for units. Um, and then, let's see. Uh, round five was your Chronicle Mirror match. I 2 0 him. Um, pretty much who hit a trigger again. Same mirror match problems. Um, and then top four, I placed at first against Nova Grapplers. And uh, went 2 1 there. I got great stuck again. Like, you keep losing to great stuck. That's what I mainly have because of the problem of running two starters in your deck. You get great stuck issues. Um, uh, let's see. Um, for, oh, funny story. Before we cut to top four, um, there was two people tied for fourth place, so they had to play each other out. It was a Gear Chronicle player versus a Nova Graphic player, and I believe he was able to win by getting a crit. Uh, from what I heard, I didn't get to see the match because I was doing my uh, deck check at that time, so I didn't get to go take a look at the match. It was best of ones to see who gets to take fourth place. And then uh, then we went to go play top four in a separate room. Uh, top two was gear, give us gear. And then uh, that was pretty much it. Um, we did do the turn thing where if you go to time, it goes, uh, whoever's turn it is is zero, and then one, two, three. We did do that, which I was happy about. Um, for the Continentals, I think the format was very good. Swiss, best 2 out of 3 was very good. I, I am proud that Bushiro did that. I wish that they do that for other regionals and keep it that way. And then they did announce the 2-day ones. So I can't remember it all off the top of my head information for that. So if you guys want a video on that, I'll try and put one up. But you guys probably already know about it. Um, that's pretty much it. Enough of me rambling on. Uh... The deck is very strong. If the deck does get hit by the ban list, I can see TikTok getting hit. I don't really see Melum getting hit because it's getting a reprint. I don't see Upstream getting hit because it's getting a reprint. I don't see Next Stage getting hit because, again, it just got a reprint. And there's... That's kind of like their boss card. And they're probably not going to hit that. Um, Stand Trigger. I don't really see that one getting hit. It has a chance, but I doubt it's going to get hit because of the fact that... It, it's the main card. is also a good card for Chronofang. And they want to help Chronofang go out too because it's also a new deck. Um, and then Zodiac Time Beast is about to come out, so they're probably just going to hit TikTok if they hit anything at all. Um, that's still a good hit. It still slows down the deck. And stops us from being able to consistently go TikTok Melum combo. First try. Um, other than that, I can't really see them hitting much else. I agree that it's very strong combo, but at this point, uh, with the new deck build coming out for Zodiac Time Beast and new support, I can see them like maybe not hitting TikTok and just waiting till the Zodiac Time Beast come out. But if TikTok keeps continuing through that, then they'll probably hit it. Or they'll hit it after finals. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry about ranting. Um...